Hi guys, I know that you have a swim meet and this weekend's busy, so I thought what I'd do is take Mrs. Fernandez's practice test and break it down. So the first thing you should do before watching the video is take the practice test that she has on Google Classroom and try not to look at the answers <laughs> and then come back here. So what you're basically learning about is the Greco-Roman tradition plus a little Persian and Byzantine. What is the Greco-Roman tradition? It's us. As you can see here, here's Syracuse, Rome, Troy, Ithaca. We live in the Greco-Roman tradition. Either our towns are named after Greek and Roman towns or they're named after Native Americans or Native American tribes. So the founding people in this area were Renaissance people, and the Renaissance believed in this revival of the Greco-Roman tradition. What is the Greco-Roman tradition? It's democracy, it's law, it's theater, it's science, it's philosophy. Um, it's all those things that we value, and the reason why you have to take so many classes in school. So Greco-Roman tradition, political, economic, religious, and social. Political, it's the privilege of citizenship. In the Greek city-states, you have them because of geography, of course, because the mountains limit them. They're, you know, very um, isolated polises. But you also have this idea of what a citizen is, who they are. You have slaves, of course. You have also this idea of direct democracy of the citizens. In the Roman, first you'll have a democratic senate, then you'll have a republic, and then you'll have a huge empire. But what the Romans are able to do is the Law of the Twelve Tables, which we still use um, today in terms of guilt of the accused, um, rights that we have. And of course, Caesar becomes very important in a strong ruler of a large empire. For the Byzantine Empire, I need you to remember it splits and then it falls. Lincoln said a house divided cannot stand. The Roman Empire, once it split, once Constantine makes that eastern capital of Constantinople, of course, named after himself, it's going to fall, plus those Germanic tribes that come in. When just Justin um, Justinian's code comes in, he's going to be able to codify the, the law of the Twelve Tables and make it his own. Remember that Justinian both has secular and religious power. Secular power is non-religious power. It's the rule of law. And of course, religious is Christianity in this case. Economically, trade, conquest, war, repeat. Trade, conquest, war, repeat all the time. Um, and Alexander the Great is the greatest at this. And when he goes places, he leaves a general and he says, make it Greece. That's why there's so many Alexandrias, uh, Alexandria, Egypt, and all these things. He goes all the way to India. All of that combining of ideas and cultures is called Hellenistic. Roman. All roads lead to Rome. Also the late Han Empire. They're existing at the same time. Trade is vital. All roads lead to Rome, meaning all trade leads back. All money leads back. Byzantine Constantinople becomes, today it's Istanbul, it becomes like the New York City of the East. It has so much trade. It's so important. And the Russians are right there. And they don't have a lot. And so they trade with the Byzantines, and they're going to get, through trade, cultural diffusion. Trade equals cultural diffusion. And the Russians are going to get the Cyrillic alphabet, domed architecture, and the Eastern Orthodox belief system. For the Greeks and Romans, first it's a pantheon of gods, all those pagan gods. Then, in the year 300, after 300 years after the Roman Empire crucified Jesus, you get the Roman Catholic Church, and then the Byzantine Empire takes on that Eastern Orthodox Church. And the question is, who will rule? The Pope or the leader of the Eastern Orthodox Church? And the Pope is always going to want to rule. Socially, sexism is rampant. There's lots of um, differences between slaves and non-slave rights. Um, Sparta versus Athens and Greece. Um, the Greeks are very um, dis distinct in their social roles and gender roles. Women actually had more rights in Sparta than they did in Athens, and Roman women weren't even citizens. So here what we're going to do is we're going to take apart the questions that Mrs. Fernandez gave you. Here's how you attack a multiple choice stimulus-based question. You look at the citation, the source, the date, the time. Is it primary, secondary? Who's the author? Then you read the question and underline key things like people's names, 
slow down, read every word, especially words like accept, point of view, tone, audience, um, etc. or not. Underline keywords. If the stimulus is a map, chart, or political cartoon, pay clo close attention to the title, the caption, and the key. Read each choice carefully. Cross out and eliminate answers you feel are definitely incorrect. Ask yourself which answer is the truest answer. Yes, we'll often feel like you are choosing between two good choices, so pick the option that's most true most of the time. Here's another hint. The first stimulus-based question typically needs the stimulus, but the remaining question or questions typically, typically draw from your knowledge of the historical time period or vocabulary. So what I did was I took out each question and just put it in a category. There's only one Persian question on the practice one. This one, which is the following features of Persian rule were most critical to facilitating loyalty from conquered groups, is actually tolerance. Tolerance for diversity among a host of language and groups. Interestingly enough, when you learn about the Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman Empire will also have tolerance. Now they'll tax non-Muslim people living in their empire. But I really do believe that has something to do with the Persian influence of controlling diverse people through tolerance. There's many Greek questions here. Question 15, which statement best explains the presence of Greek architectural styles throughout the Middle East and the Mediterranean? Um, it's, it's just the idea that Alexander the Great is going to spread that Hellenic culture across the areas. Trade equals cultural diffusion again. 17 says, how is the Parthian similar to the ziggurats of the Sumerian city-states? Um, both were intended to be the center of spiritual life and the most sacred temple. It's big for a reason. Which of the following is accurate statement about the ancient Greeks? Um, the commitment to arts and sciences, which is still around, would be cornerstones of Western culture. Here is the first question, and you might have gotten hung up on the highlighted word here, veneration. Veneration just means to worship. Ancestor, people who come before. If I look at this, I see that it's written in 1944. It's a secondary source by Will Durant, Caesar and Christ. Okay. I read it, and at the last sentence it says, represented gods or spirits of the family. And that's why the answer is Roman traditions included ancestor veneration. This one is pretty easy. I look right at the key, Roman roads, AD 14. Okay, lots of roads. All roads lead to Rome, right? And of course, the answer is the, the Roman road network, which is answer D. This one is kind of tricky. And it's coming from the 12 tables, so it's a little convoluted language. And it talks about property and possessions. And then it talks about tearing faces at funerals and marriages. Um, but Roman women in Republic were allowed to do all the following except so which one is not true? They were not allowed to serve as senators because they're not really citizens. So of course, if you're not a citizen, you can't be holding elected office. This one is obviously from Acts 9 through 20, um, this idea of the elements of Christianity. And the elements of Christianity here um, is talking about conversion and miracles how if you see this wording right here and laying his hands on him brother Saul, the lord jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me that you may regain your sight the miracle of sight um these stories that jesus was able to help people really grew in his authority and of course testimony of the disciples here we have peter and it says the point of view of this excerpt was the belief in Jesus as, as the Christ or as the anointed one. And it was legitimized again by the personal accounts, letter C, of his disciples. These, these 12 disciples were very important, especially Paul and others and Peter and John and the Gospels, Mark, uh, to explain the mystery of Jesus. Byzantine. She's got some Byzantine questions here. This is the ruler Constantine. Of course, remember, he's the splitter, okay? And five, uh, which group most benefited from reforms under Constantine? Of course, the Christians. The Romans, no, because he's going to see them as the West. The Greeks, no. The Byzantines are a diverse group, so it's the Christians. In 324, Emperor Constantine transferred the capital from Rome to Byzantium and renamed the city Constantinople. Greatest ramification? 
of course, is this idea of the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. You can't split a Roman Empire and then expect it to survive, especially with the Germanic tribes that are ready to invade. Attila the Hun, the Visigoths, the Vandals, and such. Here we see this question of Justinian. Does he have what power does he have? An emperor has both secular and religious authority. Remember, secular means non-religious. So that's why it's B. Here you see a map, uh, mostly of this eastern area, and the questions go with it. This idea that nine, which the following was the best title, of course, it's the Byzantine Empire under Justinian the want first. Ten, which the following should not be attributed to Justinian. Of course he rebuilt the Hagia Sophia. Of course he had the codification of the Roman law with his code. Um, he doesn't attempt to reunify um, the Roman Empire, and he doesn't adopt the Germanic Christianity that's going to go on in the European Roman Empire after the fall of Rome. So that's why it's um, that's why it's uh, D. Okay, and then finally, the theological split. Who is going to rule? And that's why it's A for number 11. The Pope's insistence that he be the supreme head of the church above the Byzantine patriarchs. The Pope must rule is his idea. Here we have this halos and man babies and alphabet that looks Cyrillic. Um, so, of course, it's the Byzantine church. This one, the theme is women are assigned very prescriptive roles, and of course it is gender roles. You probably did well on that one. Okay, Russia. Russia, here, huge, Kiev, all of this, Black Sea. They're going to come in and they're going to trade with Constantinople and the Byzantines and later the Ottomans. So trade equals cultural diffusion. Ninth grade should be called trade equals cultural diffusion. When people trade, they trade their cultures. The Russians are going to pick up the Orthodox Christianity, the Cyrillic alphabet, and that domed architecture. So that says, which of the following accurately describes the early development of Kievan or Russian economy and society? Is that Kiev benefited from the easy access to the principal trade routes between Russia and the Byzantines? Trade, trade, trade. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So I hope that that helped a little bit on this idea of what's going on during this time. Okay.